Hello and welcome to your Newsmax Now update. I'm John Bachman. New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg vows to fight a judge's decision that calls the city's controversial stop and frisk policy unconstitutional. That policy allowed police to stop and search people even without warrants. Police say it was a life-saving crime-fighting tool, but the courts called it racially discriminatory. Opponents said it also violates the Constitution's Fourth Amendment, which guards against unlawful searches and seizures. That ruling does not put an end to the practice, but it does reform the way the NYPD will have to implement those stops. Bloomberg says it will ultimately make the city less safe. This is a very dangerous decision made by a judge that I think just does not understand how policing works. The mayor added that the ruling makes things even more confusing for cops because they will now have to change their long-standing practices. And James Whitey Bulger, leader of the Winter Hill Gang, Boston's Irish mob, will now finally pay for the murders he orchestrated in the 1970s and 80s. A police escort whisked away Bulger after a jury found him guilty of 11 counts of murder and a slew of racketeering charges. His lawyer said the verdict came as no surprise to the 83-year-old. The jury deliberated for five days before reaching an agreement on most of the charges. Bulger's defense lawyers tried to put the government on trial, detailing the corruption and payoff of several FBI agents, state and local police officers, and other authorities. The tactic did help get Bulger off on eight of the 20 murder, murder charges against him. For the families of those victims, Monday's verdict was painful. I never got to meet my father, and I'm still getting kicked into the stomach to this day. Sentencing for Bulger is scheduled for November 13th. The 83-year-old faces a maximum sentence of life in prison. And the owners of a resort near Disney World in Florida are waiting to find out just how much damage was caused to the property after a sinkhole opened up and swallowed at least one building there. A security guard is also being called a hero for going door to door to wake up guests when the building first started shifting. And right now, authorities say there is no reason to believe this hole is getting any larger. And a man attending a Monday night baseball game with the Atlanta Braves has died after falling more than 60 feet from the upper deck of Turner Field. Police say witnesses described the fall as an accident, but they're not sure if wet conditions contributed to the fall. Heavy rains delayed that game for nearly two hours. And coming up next on your Newsmax Now update, former Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr. How long will he go to prison for illegally spending campaign contributions, plus see what kind of special treatment he's asking for? And as Republicans in Congress contemplate pulling out all the stops to defund Obamacare, the founder of Americans for Tax Reform, Grover Norquist, proposes an alternative. We could get a one-year delay. Up next, a Newsmax exclusive with Norquist and why he thinks his plan will work. Attention hip implant patients. Are you in constant pain? Have you received a letter from your doctor about your implant? Have you had or need a revision surgery? Do you have high levels of metal, chromium, or cobalt in your blood? Over 90,000 hip implant devices have been recalled due to defects and failures resulting in revision or replacement surgery. If you have a recalled hip implant, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-460-0920 to see if your implant is affected by the recalls. If you or a loved one has a defective or recalled hip implant, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-460-0920. That's 800-460-0920. Protect your legal rights today. Call 800-460-0920. This is an advertisement, not valid in all states. Paid non-attorney spokesperson, ilawsuit.com is an advertising group that represents lawyers advertising their services and is a free matching service for consumers. It is not a law firm or lawyer referral service. Judging from everything you hear, you think all cholesterol is bad, but that's not really true. You need a certain amount of cholesterol to maintain good health. The problem is that too much cholesterol in your blood contributes to a plaque a fatty substance that narrows the coronary arteries that feed blood flow to your heart. Picture your coronary arteries as a four-lane highway. If one lane becomes blocked, traffic still flows well. Two lanes, no major problem. But if a third lane becomes blocked, that spells trouble. It's the same way with your coronary arteries. And when plaque slows their blood flow to your heart, this can even cause a heart attack. The good news is that when it comes to cholesterol, lifestyle changes can pay off big time. Even a small reduction in plaque can be like opening up another highway lane. Suddenly, blood flow that was stalled can go forward again. Changing your lifestyle does not have to be hard. 
And in fact, here are three ways to help you start lowering your cholesterol. Snack on nuts. Nuts are probably one of the easiest and tastiest ways to lower cholesterol. Walnuts and almonds are among the best. Bulk up your diet with fiber. Choose whole fruits instead of a fruit juice, brown rice instead of white, and if you're eating a baked potato, be sure to leave the skin on. Choose fish. Fish contains cholesterol-fighting omega-3 fatty acids. I'm Dr. Chauncey Crandall, and thanks for watching this Heart Health Minute. Remember, it's never too late to prevent or reverse heart disease. Right now, I invite you to discover your own risk for heart disease or even a heart attack by taking my quick, free online quiz at www.simpleheartest.com. And welcome back. Jesse Jackson Jr. and his wife will learn their fates tomorrow. Both face sentencing for illegally spending $750,000 in campaign funds. Prosecutors has, have asked the judge to sentence Jackson Jr. to four years in prison, and they recommended 18 months for his wife. She pleaded guilty to filing false tax returns. And despite strong warnings from their colleagues, some Republicans are still threatening to shut down the government in order to defund Obamacare. But during a Newsmax exclusive, anti-tax crusader Grover Norquist tells us he's got a better, less risky plan. A one year delay uh, would make it easier to get rid of Obamacare in the future. And if we delay it, delay it one year, I think we could go back and delay it again. And to see more of our exclusive interviews and content, stay with Newsmax.com. This has been your Newsmax Now update for August 13th. I'm John Bachman. Now here's the Steve Malsberg Show in New York.